Yeah, and we're gonna be seeing Steve or rather Enderman going up against me, so I'm gonna fight it. Um, whew. Interesting. This is uh, this is this is not like a matchup that you see quite often. Um, and right off the bat, I just feel like it's gonna be really difficult for me, Solid Fighter, to be able to challenge um a lot of Enderman space. You know, Enderman, especially if they you know set up a wall through that through themselves. Uh, Tornado is no longer gonna be an issue. Chakram is a non-issue. Jake is just able to play back and uh, get the resources that they're looking for. Yeah, and it calls into contention is will Eric actually swap out me sword fighters? moves seeing as how this is a very different matchup against enderman but so far we'll see how things will go here of course eric is down 92 jake on the 25. eric knows once he's getting he's got to make the most out of it but that's the one thing about enderman you have to be really respectful towards that minecart for sure and that tornado not going to be able to follow up into anything quite yet right now jake is just doing a really good job of just sort of keeping away and being able to really play his game which is he is getting enough space for himself he's able to get those resources and eric is struggling to be able to approach but right now me sort of are not going to be dying to the mine cut just yet but the next one can definitely take it i like that you said that too creating space for himself because you're able to punish your opponents for going for projectiles on the end lag of projectiles with minecart with how fast it is specifically if you have the gold and redstone ingots mined out so it's really good for jake to consistently mine keep mining excellent up throw because most opponents actually would be di'ing for the forward throw which also sends you at a really ridiculous angle mm -hmm. yeah no no it's 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 uh can definitely be quite deceptive um, and right now, wow, that's a really, really good way just to sort of respond to that card. Uh, because even if you're not able to get a hit on your opponent from the projectile itself, uh, you sort of force them to go back to the other side of the stage uh, yeah. by reflecting it. You know, you get to uh, you know, you get to take control of center stage again. So I love this adaptation from Eric right now. They're really playing on top of it. Um, love the landing mix-up coming from Jake, just able to make themselves a bit more ambiguous with Anvil. Oh, and immediately you see the sword break, but he's still got another sword activated. Jake's still taking the time to mine up the materials because we know how important it is to stop Eric from going for something like Chakram or even Tornado. Jake saving the jump and electing to go back to the sides of the stage. He's got to watch himself because that forward air, yep, will able to pretty much send him far off. Mm -hmm. And right now, Eric is just giving Jake a lot of space, which is exactly what you need to be doing against Steve. Uh, because, wow, he is a character with so much potential for recovery mix. His up B has like a deceptive amount of end lag. Eric tries to go through the follow up off of the slow velocity chalk room, but was not able to find it quite yet. And right now, I have to say, like, they've been doing a really good job of just adapting. Yeah. Tornado, yeah, and that's forcing Jake to kind of go center stage, but we know Jake is looking to mine out of materials here as well, but also looking to possibly build something excellent in use. Once again, still using the minecart to kind of break through. Like I said, that's the beauty about having Steve, I'm sorry, Enderman in this case, because you can punish your opponents for going for projectiles, and you have to respect minecart. It is registered as a command grab, but that's an wow. excellent play. What a call out. That was excellent. Yeah, Jake was really trying to fish through like that up beat confirm into up smash. Uh, well, I believe it was now Smash. It was one of the two. Uh, but Steve is able to get that out of the corner. However, it is a huge commitment. There is that huge window of vulnerability before uh, Steve's hitbox actually does end up coming out. So, you know what? Eric was able to get the Chakram into the F Smash. That was really, really good. Uh, going into game two from uh, Jake, I would like just to see uh, a little bit more out of shield play. Or just like being able to cover themselves a little bit more efficiently with blocks because yeah. Chakram has done so much that game. We'll see if there's going to be any swaps here. Of course, Eric still sticking to the Mii Sword Fighter. Like I said, I wonder if Eric was going to make any changes to the character's moveset, but I, we might see them sticking with it, honestly, because it played out so well towards the end. Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, going into game number two, they're actually going to be opting to go for town and city. Not really sure what, um, you know, Jake's thought was going onto the stage. Perhaps maybe trying to mix up the recovery a little bit more, landing on the side platforms. Either way, you know, that's exactly what they're doing. They're uh, giving themselves a bit of a shield with the blocks, but wow, Eric's angle and awareness was so good. They're, you know, able to not only crush one of the blocks, but still be able to hit Jake in the process. And yeah. much like game one, this is targeting off in Jake's favor. Um, and Eric is just doing anything that he can just to uh, sort of try to adapt in the meantime. Excellent use of neutral air. The last hit able to actually still hit out Jake. Excellent follow up there with the up air. Just because, you know what, if you're on town and city and you want to force Steve to land, Steve landing options are very committal. They only have Elytra and Minecart. And if you can punish those, you act Eric has in the last game, then you'll be pretty off 
well. Uh, yeah, Fushogun, even though like Elytra does have very little end lag, um, you know, it's Steve is quite vulnerable to doing it. Um, and wow, that up smash just lasted so long. Elik was not able to air dodge through it. Um, you know, that, that, that move, that move multi hits, uh, it, it just traps <laughs> you and it's out there for so long. Um, but of course, you know, the hitbox on it is, uh, it's, it's quite straightforward. So it's not going to be able to catch you in unexpected places. So, uh, really good way for Jake to be able to take that stock though. Elik tornadoing in the wrong direction, probably misinputted B reverse. Oh, excellent cross up from Eric. Definitely seeing how Jake went for a double spot dodge. We try to go for a spot dodge smash cancel. So immediately, that's well understanding from Eric, just trying to avoid that. Even though Eric is down to Jake's three stocks, still on 121, Eric is still making some slight adaptations. This is a down throw. I like that from Jake, looking for the follow up and looking yeah, to see how Eric is going to respond. That was a really, really cool mix up. Um, you know, like more often than not, you know, Steve, uh, if they're able to like really get their timing down and the percent down, they can do like jab forward links. Uh, but that time, you know, uh, probably not tight enough of a window, uh, was able to find the grab as a bit of a mix up. Really good stuff. And now the next hit from Elk is going to be able to take it, but it's at that point where Tornado is doing so much knockback that it's difficult to follow up off of it. Um, but just like that, Elk was able to even it back up, but is it too late? Yeah. I do like this call from Jake to continuously use minecart because it forces Eric to go for an aerial or just to jump out of shield to avoid the command grab, and then Jake can punish it so with the forward air and potentially lead it to more damage or a corner carry. But that's an excellent play from Eric there, just punishing Jake for going for mining out materials and trying to stall a little bit. Oh no! Yeah, that down smash is going to be able to take it beautifully spaced from Jake. Um, and wow, this was uh, this was a completely different game. Uh, Jake looked so much more confident going into this one. Uh, Jake was just able to execute their game plan, and the issue was Elik was not able to find those chakra follow-ups uh, that we saw in the previous. Yeah. And what I'm something I'm curious about is uh, the decision to go for uh, that variant of me, Solid Fighters Uppy, rather than the uh, the Hero Spin one. And the Hero Spin one, you know, typically is like the one that you'd see on Kits with Tornado on it because you're able to get, you know, some uh, pretty consistent kill confirms that way. So I'm curious, like, what the rationale is uh, not doing that. Yeah, honestly, that's the little cool thing about Mii Sword, and also just in general, the Mii's, you can kind of adapt to different opportunities that you might feel maybe better in combat. And like you said, normally you would see the hero spin, but I still like the fact that Aerie kind of keeps the general game plan with me sword honestly understanding how to use chakram using tornado and then even mixing things up to see it against jake and so far eric is playing really strong especially coming off from game one and also coming off the last game was able to find the double fail off of a jump call out there but right now jake trying to get some of those up tilt uh links going not able to find any of it wow but once enderman received like is able to hit that up tilt that it's just so much damage consistently eric has to be constantly mindful of that because it is a devastating option yeah one thing i'm also liking about eric too eric will take the time to go through the reflector reflect the minecart back and then immediately no load against jake jake is looking for follow-ups of minecart it's good on eric to take that away from him Ooh, Elg is able to get the Tornado. They recognized that the position that they would not actually be able to follow up because it was the early Tornado. They were not actionable quite yet. They waited, but um, they were not able to get a punish on that air dodge. Once again, I really like the way that Jake has been uh, setting up blocks, but Elg has now adapted, started breaking the lowest block and throwing Chakrams under it. Uh, yeah. So Jake is just going to have to find... You know, Jake can't be committing to resource pulling as much. Exactly, and even then... Eric also understands the one thing that Jake wants me to do is respect minecart. Once I take that away, it's literally over. And that's what we see Eric here with the first block punishing the Elytra. Because like you said, it's got a little cooldown, but you can still punish it because the hitbox initially does not last all the way through. Mm -hmm, for sure. Oh, and finding the spot dodge punish off of that whiff dash attack. But that one is actually not going to be able to take it quite yet. Not going to be able to kill from across the stage. Eric, ooh, that's going to be the card. Not able to find the forwarder, actually. Jake, unfortunately, misfacing themselves. But, you know, not going to be taking too much extra damage. Just able to cut the bleeding immediately and even up that stock count. Yeah. All right, Eric's on the recovery. Excellent to go to Tornado. This is going to allow Eric to slowly ease in on center stage. Great play, too, and especially also from Drake. Just trying to stop Eric's aggression to try to take back center stage as well. For sure. And again, Eric is just really relying on a lot of these chakrams. There's just sort of an interruption to like saying, hey, you're going to stop jumping here. You're going to stop dashing back. You're going to stop trying to go through mines. Eric had the right idea once again for waiting, but did not position themselves to be able to follow up off of that uh, beta defensive option. 
All right, track him again, trying to cover the high. Excellent play with the tornado, able to also stop the minecart and looking for a follow-up. This is Eric's chance. I do like that patience, looking to see how Jacob's going to land and possibly punish that as well. At some point, I would like to see Eric try to commit to a follow-up after that two damage because they've been going for it so often, but uh, not even trying to commit to anything. They're always waiting, which is good, you know, as a mix-up sometimes, but at some point, you just have to try to go through that dice go. You're going to have to try to guess uh, that follow-up option. Going to be catching the landing on the platform with the up smash, setting up a tech chase, finding it again with the uphill, and Jake not continuing the advantage, just taking the time to pull uh, to mine once again. Yeah, Eric saying center stage. I like that play. This is the, the no mix up mix up is what we're seeing from Eric, and that kind of finally pays off. Definitely understanding Jake has to respect Eric on Eric's presence, and then go towards the ledge, and Eric will also punish the landing here. Great parry, but no follow up. Still good to respect and parry that anvil. For sure. And right now, Eric able to get the up tilt, now finds the grab out of the dash back. Uh, really, really good stuff. They position themselves to be able to catch on to Jake's next defensive option. You just really have to take advantage of the fact that Steve, you know, um, in CQC, he just struggles so much in disadvantage. Uh, he doesn't have, like, a lot of particularly fast to disjointed buttons uh, in the ill. Um, you know, that, that do come out in a reasonable uh, time frame. Right now, Eric is really looking for that tornado, oh. not able to connect it, and Jake cleans it up once again. Yeah, spot dodge for smash. That's actually something that we're seeing a lot of Steve mains go for, just because the spot dodge cancel is really good for the character. Okay. And then neutral light to land here. The no follow up. I like that. Eric still trying to continuously catch Eric Jake on the landing. To wait. Yeah, yeah. Eric just keeps on waiting, but as a result, because they're not committing, um, you know, they're missing on like a lot of potential follow up opportunities. Oh. And that's going to be the F smash actually taking it at 80%. Oh my goodness, that is such a heartbreaker for Eric too. Definitely had most of the momentum in that game, but Jake was just able to secure that kill. Oh man, you 